did the Pistons give up on Luka Garza too early? I've already mentioned this is a silly topic to people listening, but here it goes. The Portland Trailblazers seem to think all – of us Pistons fans are dead wrong, and they believe they got a franchise savior in Luka Garza. One fan even said he's more than starter material. In my opinion, he's a scoring machine, just needs a fair chance to show it. Does Luka Garza have a shot at a long NBA career? Anthony, you are on. The light is on you. Um, No. <laughs> so it's such an easy question to answer. <laughs> no, it's like – Laterally, I think that's where he needs to work on his game defensively. Um, I know he did this thing with overtime where, you know, they were showing like his workout regimen and he's shooting threes. It's like, dude, we know you can shoot threes. Like, show me you working out defensively and maybe I'll take you seriously. I think Luca Garza offensively, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a guy that's just a monster in the post you know, can spread the floor. But I think the biggest reason why the Pistons moved on was defensively, this guy's a liability. And, you know, you got Duran now, you know, there's, there was really no need for a Luka Garza on this roster. Uh, loved his time here in Detroit. He was a fan favorite. Um, shout out to his dad, Frank Garza, who's really vocal on Twitter. But it's like, at the end of the day, the NBA is a business. I don't think the Pistons gave up on Luka Garza too early. I just think, you know, it, we're in this time of the rebuild where, you know, the future is now when you got a guy in Jalen Duran and Isaiah Stewart who um, are developing their games. Isaiah Stewart looks like freaking prime Steph Curry in the, the summer league shooting threes. And we know what he brings defensively. Uh, we know Jalen Duran has a lot of potential to be a, a two-way player in this league. And I think that's what Pistons fans need to look at is we didn't give up on him. We just upgraded the talent. Look, Luca Garza is so bad defensively. He's a liability on the bench. That's how bad he is defensively. Look, I I thought at one point Luca Garza had a shot in the NBA, not like as a full time starter. Like I remember Johnny Kane tweeting out that he was the next Bill Lambeer. The most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. You know, like it's it's not eighties basketball, man. Like you don't need it. Like a guy like Luca Garza. He never survived in today's NBA. Like, the footwork's not there. Defensively, he's not there. He he has no lateral quickness. The only thing I was disappointed in when he was here in Detroit is they didn't give him – they didn't really run offensive sets for him. Now, I'm not saying just give Luka Garza the rock, but it seemed like – you know, I mean, we know he's gifted offensively. We know he can put the ball in the hoop. I would have loved to see the Pistons try to maximize and capitalize on what he could do offensively when he was in some of those lineups with Cade. But did you ever think that Luka Garza would have a role in the NBA? Yeah, I think there's a role for him, definitely. If you want an offensive center, uh, just to come off your bench and fill the void for maybe like five to ten minutes while, you know, whether your starting center's in foul trouble or you're at the end of the quarter or your you know, starting center needs a breather, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I look at teams like Philadelphia. Maybe there's a room for him on there if they're looking for a backup for Joel Embiid or something like that. Like, there's room for him in the NBA. It's just I think fans look at him being the player of the year in Iowa and, you know, it's shattering all the scoring records over there. But, I mean, like, I, I'm not, like, really mad that we let him go. Yeah, I'm not mad either. I thought there would – I do – man, it's kind of hard for me to say because I, at one point I thought there was a role for him, kind of like how teams use um, Boban Marvanovic a yeah. little bit where, like, it's matchup dependent. You know, there might be a couple minutes at the end of the quarter. You could – you know, where the game – there's still enough time in the game where it's not going to cost you that much to have him on the floor. But, I mean, even watching, like, just comparing Boban and Luka, Boban looks like he moves so much better on an NBA floor than Luka Garza. Like, even though he is probably almost 10 years older than him as well, mm -hmm. and he's even taller than Luca, he just looks like he moves better. It, it kind of stinks for Luca because he does have such a unique offensive skill set. I mean, he can shoot the three, he can post you up, he could has a mid range jumper, he sets good screens. Like, yeah. he's not he's not a bad passer, he has good hands, like, he's active on the boards. Like, there's a lot to love about what he brings you offensively. It's just he just doesn't have the athleticism. He just has cement feet. I think if he got down to, like, maybe 225 pounds, he might be fast enough to stay in front of Bobin. But even then, I don't even think he could do it. So, it's uh, – you, you know, I mean, I'm not disappointed that Luca Garza's gone. It stinks for him. I hope he lands somewhere and has a real shot. But 
I think he's going to have a long career overseas. That's my that, Those are my <laughs> thoughts on Luka Garza. I, I think he'll be a, a journeyman in the NBA. I don't think he's going to have to go over to Europe or anything like that because I think his skill set is something that NBA teams want. Um, guy that can, you know, uh, stretch the floor or whatever. Um, but I don't think he'll end up in Europe. 